Hello Lilas, so welcome back to my channel. So guys, I am back, I am back like I promised to talk about prices. And um, as you guys know, I'm still just playing with Ruby. Um, I'd kind of hope that her hair would curl a lot more. Um, this hair was supposed to be wavy, but as you can see, it barely waves. You really gotta work with it, but I think that because I'm not so good with hair, that maybe I am not doing it right. But um, anyway, guys, if you're not following my vlog, make sure my blog, make sure you follow me at MissRenitysmithBabies.com. Um, also follow me on Instagram, guys. I'm trying to get my followers up on Instagram as well as my vlog and also YouTube. I really want to continue to grow my YouTube channel as well as grow the chatterbox. Um, the chatterbox is going to be, of course, you know, it's a wave thing. I promise once a month, but you know, there's, it's just waves. It's up and down. There's some months it's going to be more, some months it's going to be just what I promise, but I will always give exactly at least the minimum of the one live video once a month, but it is a dollar and 99 cents and you do have to be at least 18 years old to join. Um, I think that it is another way for me to continue doing this platform. Um, a while back, Google took over YouTube. Before that, um, YouTube, I was doing really well with my YouTube. <laughs> and it used to help me buy dolls, to be honest. Um, I've never been the giveaway type, so the only reason my my videos gained as many subscribers is because they were gaining before I had videos go viral. Um, I think people kind of liked me back then. And then um, I did have a video go viral, which is Zoe by Claire Teller. Um, both videos went viral. It was crazy how it happened that day. I was actually going to go looking at it to take it down because I realized I sounded so stupid on the video and the numbers were crazy i was like what the hell like you know it was like like within an hour it was like thousands of views on it and i was like that's crazy so the video to date has um 20 million views on it but what happened is it would have had more than that but youtube stopped it or slowed it down or whatever um when google took over and start you know taking out people videos and stopping videos the other one up under it have like three million um views and then there was a lot of other videos that was like a hundred and something thousand views um for those people that v videos that viral videos did not get slowed down and stopped they will continue to grow at a rapid pace but because they slowed down a lot of my my viral videos or stopped them pretty much like took the comments off etc etc um it it has slowed down my growth my speed of gaining subscribers so but other than that you know i've never bought subscribers i never bought views um everything has been organic on my channel so when people say oh she's not growing da da da, da um i laugh because so many people have actually even confessed that they bought views or subscribers and i've never done that um so anyway, anything that I do, I do it organically because I'm just a very raw and real person. Like I, like just like painting with the dolls, I've never taken classes or anything like that. I just experimented and learn on my own. Um, I've always loved dolls. You know, it's just like I have, I have a love for decorating, um, my home like I don't want to go out and decorate other people home for a living but I always enjoy like doing home projects as far as decorating not making stuff and creating stuff but going out buying stuff changing my bedding my you know accent scent um pillows and stuff on my nightstands and da 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 um I've always loved to collect rare uh artwork from my walls I kind of stopped that once I kind of got into this hobby, I stopped a lot of stuff when I got into this hobby, but I'm getting slowly getting back to some of that stuff because I realized that I was just well too consumed with the dolls. 
which is brings me to prices um because i became so addicted to the dolls i was willing to do whatever it take and pay whatever i had to pay to get them um i would sell my most favorite doll um literally be almost in tears because i just had to have that next doll it was just that addiction it was just that rush that good feeling of a brand new baby coming and the awe of you know the advance um painting and silicone the change of the feel how soft they are how flexible they are oh one piece you know armatures oh drinking wet it was it was always something that i needed more than i needed the doll that i had in my collection so i would do whatever it took um i have sold before my entire collection just to have one baby only to not be totally satisfied with the painting or totally satisfied with the look of the doll um, rather it was the body the, the the face the painting whatever and it didn't even matter I and mean, it, it it's I've had this from all levels um a lot of people think that I'm this collector that lives in this bubble and that you know I love every single thing that you know any artist do or, or you know name brand artists do or anything like that and that's that's really not the case i'm just a freaking doll addict i am really amazed with the realism i'm so in love with the art and the sculpting um that's another thing um that kind of took me away from the art a little bit too is listening to people talk about the copying of the sculpts and other sculptors sculpting on top of other dolls and you know um you know one doll may be too similar to the other one so it's got to be a replica or they they had to use this person doll to cheat and it it started taking away from my joy of collecting believe it or not and then i just kind of stuck to who i felt i really knew sculpted and then that you know that was fun and i love it because i love those artists work but it it didn't allow me to get to enjoy different babies different styles different looks and stuff so um but I think if this hobby is um there was this person and I'm not going to bring up their name because I'm not by all mean um 100% you know in love with these people or you know, I, I don't want to bring them up on my channel, but they made some valid points. And I said that even back then, there is a happy medium, you know, sometime too much is not good and, you know, too much of anything. And um, sometimes we get so caught up and addicted that we will like forsake everything else. Like I, I used to love to write. Um, and for three years before this, I wrote solid every day. I had a huge following. Um, and I just one day woke up and I was so into this. I had slowed down blogging and I got to a point and I just, I woke up one day and I said, and I just deleted my entire blog years, three years worth of short stir stories, poetry, um, back and forth um, collaborations with other writers all over the world I just deleted it just vanished and it's because I was so addicted to this hobby now I'm not trying to take you guys away from I'm just telling y'all there is a dark side to it I mean it's not dark dark but it is kind of dark um, but what I'm saying is I think that every collector deserves, if they can afford it, a very exquisite, exquisite doll. Not that it has to be expensive, which if more than likely it will be <laughs> if you get a very exquisite doll. But I don't see the harm in collecting mediocre. You know why? Because sometimes mediocrity is all we can afford. And so shame on the people that sit and 
make people feel like crap because they no longer buy the top expensive dolls. You know what I mean? Um, I've had people say to me, wow, I'm surprised you're collecting that. Or, man, it's disappointing to see, you know, that you're, you're collecting these sculptors work now that it's not even real sculpting or et cetera, et cetera. It's like, yeah, but you know what? It feels good because, you know, I can still hold that baby. I can still cuddle it. I can still dress it up and enjoy it. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, different angles might not look as realistic as, you know, some of the ones that I've had in the past. Um, some of sometimes, um, you know, of course, you know, with me painting my own dolls, I'm definitely not going to be painting on, you know, on some of these elite artists level. No, not in silicone. I, I am feeling a lot more confident in my reborn painting than ever before. I'm still got a lot to go. I still got a lot to learn there, but I feel very confident and I've collected quite a bit of reborn so i kind of know where i sit and based on doll shows and stuff and recently in my private collection i've collected some very very high-end um reborns and i realized that shit i'm painting right with these people now and it was like i don't know but i but they still have their unique style, so right? So you really appreciate the different styles. And that's another thing. That's a whole nother subject and a whole nother day. That's where people don't understand. It's not about if you are better than the artist, but do you have your own style? Because that's what makes collecting fun. Like I collect from other artists because I love the way they do what they do. I don't want to do what they want they do i want to do my style but every now and then i want to have a different baby that's like wow that's nice i like the way they did that you know what i mean but anyway with price um i think you know people will say you know there'll always be somebody that'll pay that price and that's true um my goal is to get what I feel my dolls are worth when I sell them. Um, I have a lot of people telling me, other artists say, don't say that. Don't say that you won't ever, you know, ask for $7,000 or $8,000 for your reborn. And I keep telling myself, I don't know that I would. Now, if they bid it to that point, if it was on an auction, then hey, yeah. But I don't know that I just put it out there like that. But they say, don't say that because you don't know until you get to that point. But I just, I think that there's more collectors as average collectors that can afford average prices versus the rich collectors. There's a lot of rich collectors out here, even the ones that claim not to be rich. Um they really have the money to really kick that money out so yeah there will always be people that buy the very very expensive um reborns and silicones the ones that we will drool at and wish that one day we could own you know um but i think that there are more average i'm pretty sure there's more average collect collectors and when i say average meaning that we pay the average amount um, on reborns and silicone babies. So I think it'll always be a market for that. So I don't know if because the market is so saturated that I think that everybody have a place and will be able to eat. Um, I don't know how soon you'll be eating. <laughs> Dinner might get a little cold before you actually get to eat, but <laughs> eventually it will sell. Um, because there's always someone that's looking for just that baby at this, just that price. So yeah, anyway, that's my thought process on it. I just think that, you know, a lot of people, they're pricing their babies for what they feel that they're worth. And who are we to question that? But I just feel like it does push us a lot of us out of the 
you know, the buying market in those brackets. And we just have to find where we fit in at, you know, what's what what fits our budget, our real budget to where we're not stressed out after you buy the doll. And that's where I struggle because sometimes I feel like I'll be OK. I'll just sell so and so many dolls and I'll just make it up. But when the doll get there, if I don't, what if I don't really like it as much? I've had that happen to me before. And it's just like, it's the most, it's one of those things where, you know, when your mom tells you, you're going to eat all those vegetables before you leave this table and you can sit there all night, you will sleep there into the morning, but you will eat those vegetables. When you buy a doll that you spend that much money, it's like you will like this doll. I don't care how much you don't like this part of it or that part. You will like it for that price. <laughs> you better find a way to like it. I ain't lying. And then, you know, eventually you sell it. But then you lose money when you sell sometime. Um, you just never know what you're going to get, I guess. You know, it's like far as gone. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. That's how shopping online for these dolls are. Even my own work, I can see vast differences sometimes in between the painting, especially with the silicone, because the silicone kind of dictates the way that it takes paint and the way that I'm able to do certain things. Oh gosh. Anyway, this is just a long chat, guys. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I'm just curious. But in the meantime, I will be posting some pictures on Instagram of my little Bubba Bubba. Um, I have recently, I've taken down her for sale once again. I've, um, I've been buying her so many clothes and her soon to be brother at some point when he gets to get painted. <laughs> Um, that I just decided that, you know what, let me just keep her. I mean, the kit is so inexpensive. Um, I can afford to keep this one over some of the others. Um, Bryson, I'm going to finish Bryson up and I'm probably going to end up keeping Bryson too. I know that's how it's going to end up. Um, Bryson was on the lighter side. And although people enjoyed seeing him because he was, you know, fresh and new, um, not sure that people actually want that from me. That's another thing. People are so accustomed to me painting biracial or, you know, AA that when I paint the very light babies, they're not that excited about it. Um, but I like them. I like them because it's familiar to me. You know, I have biracial siblings, um, Caucasian siblings, um, and you know, I'm black. So, and my babies, you know, are black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, so I, I have a whole mix. And the one thing I love, and before I go, let me tell you the one reason why I love biracial babies probably almost I'm not gonna say it the most but I'm gonna say a lot because it's like the best of both worlds um you get your you get two different things mixed into one and create such you know just a ball of love it's just the best of both worlds so anyway that is it and as I'm speaking I keep looking at um, Kingsley over there and he's just so cute <sighs> I'll talk to you guys later for real I'm leaving now for real I really am <laughs> goodbye